Me and I want to say that when hard times come and when we face difficult situations, it's not necessarily because we're doing something wrong. That's not always the case. And we see that with Job. We also see that with Peter in the New Testament. And you know, Job wasn't doing anything wrong at all. But God actually brought those trials and those testings and tribulations to Job because he was righteous in the sight of God. Satan wasn't paying Job any mind because Job had a hedge around him. And God brought it to Satan's attention. And he says, have you considered my servant Job? We got to remember that. Like, you know, Satan wasn't even thinking about Job. He wasn't worried about Job. He presented himself before God in the throne room, just like every other, just like every other being has to. You know, they all bow down to God. They all bow down to, to the king. And so God asked him what he was doing. And he gave an account to God. Oh, you know what I'm doing? I'm, you know, going to and fro throughout the earth, looking for somebody I can devour, looking for somebody who's not walking with you, looking for somebody who has not submitted their lives to Christ submitted their lives to God. He wasn't at all even thinking about Job. And so the Lord brought Job to, to Satan's attention and God had to give Job the power to touch Job's uh, finances, his life, his family, his business, his houses, you know, his possessions, everything. And ultimately the way that that turned out was, you know, God was able to test Job to see if Job was going to curse God, to see if Job was going to get upset with God, to see if Job was going to complain and murmur, you know, and all of his friends and even his wife and, you know, if his kids were still living, they probably would have been used to try and tempt Job to, to complain to God and to curse God, you know, but he wouldn't do it. And, and because he didn't do that and because he trusted God and he says, you know, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away and he does. He was blessed with even double what he had before. And so I just want to give a word of encouragement to you guys who might be facing hard times. It's not always because you're doing something wrong. Now it could be, I'm not saying that it can't be. Sometimes the Lord will send us pow pals. The Lord will send us correction. The Lord will send us rebuke because something in our life is out of orders. You know, something that we're doing is he's not happy with. Um, different sins in our life, whatever it might be, the Lord will bring tribulation and trials and, and, and hard times into our life to get us to wake up, allow misfortunes and, and things like that to um, take place in our life to correct us. But that's not always the case, you know? And so it could be the Lord is preparing you for a promotion. It could be the Lord is preparing you to step into a greater blessing. It could be the Lord is forming the character in you that you need to step into you know, the ne next level with him to step into a higher, a higher position, you know, um, because the Lord doesn't take chances. You know, if he's going to bless us with something, he makes sure that our character is prepared to receive whatever he wants to release, release to us. And, you know, we've seen that with Job and we see that, you know, with Peter, when Jesus says, hey, Peter, Satan asked to sift you. Did Jesus, you know, did, did Jesus say, yeah, he asked to sift you, but I'm not going to let him. I'm going to tell Satan to get out of here, get gone. Now what he said to Peter, he said, hey, Peter, Satan has actually sift you, and uh, I pray you make it through the sifting. We see a few things in that. For one, Satan asked to sift Peter. He had to ask the king of glory to sift Peter, his disciple. So Satan can't do whatever he wants to the children of God. He has to get permission to do it. Second thing is, Jesus allowed it to happen. Why? For the same exact reason. Because the apostles were still going through testing. They were still going through trials and tribulation to form and to forge and to mold them into the servants and children of God and apostles of God and leaders of God that God needed them to be to carry out the work that they did in establishing the churches, building churches, you know, and changing the world, ultimately. It's the reason why we're here today. And so just want to give a word of encouragement.